work on the PHP part of comment. So first of all, we have to create another table in our database. So opening my PHP my admin now clicking on my database CMS 4.2.1 clicking on this new and giving it some name. So comments will be our table name and we will have five column. So one, two, three, four, let's add one more column here. So the first column will be ID. Second one will be date time. The third one will be name. Then we will have email and then we will have comment. So ID will be in type, date and time will be varchar, name will be varchar as well, email varchar, comment will be varchar as well. So the maximum number of characters you can add in the comment will be 500. Email will be restrict to let's say 60. Name will be 50. Date and time will be 50. ID will be 10. Our ID will be primary one auto incremented. Clicking here. And that's it for the structure of this table. Clicking on this save button. So here you can see we have this table of comments. Now we can insert our data here on this table. So back to my editor. This is my file of full post.php. So we will have the same type of code for date and time and basic validation. So I'm going to open my file of categories.php and let's copy this PHP scope in which we have this submit button and also our insert query so that we will not waste our time. So I'm going to copy all of this. Closing this file. Now here in this file, pasting that code of categories. So if my button of submit is set, so let's confirm the name of our button. Yeah, we have the same name of submit. So we can use this name submit going up. Now make sure that you put all of this code at the beginning of your page so that this file should execute every single code before reaching to the actual form at the time when the user will add the comment. So if my button of submit is set, then you should create variable with the name of name and we have to get the field of our commenter name. So you can see that this is our form and here you can see the name of our field input field that is commenter name and method is post we already echo the search query parameter here for this form so going up putting the name to be commenter name then we will have another variable with the name of email and that variable will use super global of post and for the name, we have to go to our field. So here you can see the name of this field is commenter email. Copying this one. Putting it here. Then we will have our actual comment. So that will use the super global of post and we have to grab the name of our text area. So here you can see our text area that has the name of commenter thoughts. Copying this one, pasting it here. We don't need this admin name anymore. Removing this one. We will use our date and time for the date and time column. After that, we will have this simple validation. 
if the commenter leave the name field empty then you should show him error or we can also apply the same restriction on this email so i will apply the empty function again on this field of email so if this name field is empty or this is this way of writing the or symbol in php double pipe sign so after that we will have or if the commenter leave the comment field empty our text area so adding the comment variable here then you should say all fields must be filled out and redirect our user to the same page of full post dot php so we have to give it id and here we will have our search query parameter in order to stay on the same page and in case if you are using the lower version of php you have to add the curly braces here although i don't need it but still it's a good practice so then we will have another restriction that if the comment is greater than 500 characters then you should say comment length should be less than five hundred characters and redirect to the same page where he is adding that comment. So adding here and then we will have this another restriction. We don't need this one. So I'm gonna remove this else block and query to insert comment in db when everything is fine so first of all let's check this validation so refreshing this page if i click submit you can see i'm not getting the session error message so i have to include the call of error message and success message here so opening categories.php going to the area where we called our functions so here are our error message and success message copying these ones and now in full post.php right inside our main area right after our h1 tag i will add those ones here so if i just refresh my page you can see this error message and if i put something like length more than 500 characters here click submit it still give me that error so giving name of john email to be this at the rate of jj.com adding content more than 500 click submit comment length should be less than 500 characters error here so our validations are working fine so let's work on our query to insert our data so we will have our global connecting db variable and then on the sql we will have sql of insert into my table of comments all in lower form and then we have to specify the field so the first field will be date time then we will have another field so let's see the structure name email and comment so then we will have name email comment now defining these ones here so date time then we will have named parameter of name then email then comment so then we will have our binding values so date and time will be this variable of date and time and then we will have for name variable will be name
email our variable will be email and then we will have field of comment and then here comment variable so I'm just mentioning these variables here so we'll prepare our SQL we will bind our values and we will execute our SQL and then we will show a message that comment submitted successfully and we will return to the page of same one and in the error message something went wrong and we will stay on the same page so if I save this one and first let's refresh our page so adding some name here email to this one and comment to testing submit something went wrong try again so what's the error here so our comment is not added we got this error message so in the browse tab of my comments table there is still nothing so we have to debug our code so this if belong to this one this else belong to this one and this one belong to this else so I'm gonna comment all of this redirection and var dump my execute So if I refresh my page and give some name submit so it says invalid parameter number number of bound variables does not match number of tokens on line 30 so we have to find out the error so how many values we are binding here we are binding 1 2 3 and 4 and here we have 1 2 3 and 4 so this one got colon 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 and I have missed my colon here so saving this one because at the time when you are defining your named parameter your named parameter should match with this named parameter that you put in the values so I missed this colon that's why it was giving me error so if I save this one and refresh this page adding the comment now submit bool is equal to true so if I click browse you can see we successfully added our comment in our table so now let's comment this var dump and uncomment all of this code saving this one refreshing my page adding the comment again submit comment submitted successfully and here is our comment so the idea is we will get the comment from a random user by this form and then we will send that comment to our admin panel and in case if the admin approve our comment we will show the comment on this page of fullpost.php according to this id otherwise if admin don't approve the comment the comment will not appear on this page of fullpost.php and also admin can delete the comment anytime he like at the time of taking some comment from the user we have to make that comment status off by default 
and then later when the admin will approve the comment we will add the comment on this page of fullpost.php so that all the comment don't appear on this page of fullpost.php without the admin approval so we have to change something in our table of comments so i will add two columns for now here in this table so adding two columns and these column will be after my comment column so clicking go the first one will be approved by and in this column we will save the name of our admin who is gonna approve our comment and the next one will be status so approved by will have a var chart type its length will be 50 it will have the name of our admin later and status will have a type of varchar as well and its length will be 3 so clicking this save button browsing this one now we have two more column here so by default we will send some values to these columns so right after this comment mentioning this new column of approved by and for its value I will add the string of pending and then we will have another column with the name of status and this one will have the string of off as a default value so if I show you this these are the two columns that we just wrote so as we are passing these columns values by ourselves so there is no chance of SQL injection here so we don't have to bind these values like the other ones because we are taking these values from the user that's why I bind the values there is no chance of SQL here so if I save this one and refresh my page adding the new comment submit comment submitted successfully if I browse it again you can see approved by pending and status is off so the idea is this comment will go to the admin and when the admin will approve this comment the status will be on but that is a later thing to do first of all we have to connect this comment with this post of id is equal to 14 because this comment is randomly adding in our table of comments it does not have any link with this id of 14 so we have to create a connection between this post and the respective comment adding in our table for this post and we will do that by using foreign key so in the next lecture we will learn about foreign key where we will establish our connection of post with our respective comment